is learning the three steps to really help with anxiety. And I call this the anchor method. So get ready because you're definitely going to need a paper and a pen for this one so that you can leave with some takeaways and some information that can help make an impact on this thing called anxiety or stress. Okay, so let's first start and just understand the difference between anxiety and stress. Okay, so we want to understand which one is which because in order to handle anxiety, it's different than how we handle stress. So when you think of anxiety, is that an internal world issue or is that an external issue? Internal, right? Anxiety is what's going on in here and it's an internal world. So the solution is to be able to outward think, get out of the mind and out into maybe even out of the house. Instead of contracting energy, we pull into that expanded energy. Now, the opposite for stress is external. And if we're in that external stress, the answer is to go more internal. Maybe that's taking a break or that's canceling a social event that you're just too overwhelmed with or journal writing or meditating. Those are all internal practices, right? And so often we can get them confused if we're feeling anxiety and somebody's saying, just journal write. Well, that could be an expanding tool, but might be that you just need to go out and be in nature and actually get out. Okay. And vice versa for the other one. Often people say when you're stressed out, just go be social. Nope. Sometimes going more inward would actually be more of the answer. So let's go into now the three steps of learning about anxiety. And I have my own personal experience with this. so I'll share mine. So make sure you have your pen and paper for this. So whatever you're going through with anxiety, I want you to write down um, step number one is take me back to a past event where you felt like you weren't going to make it. And write that down. And while you're writing that down, I'm going to share with you a past experience where I didn't think I was going to make it. Um, so my past event was when I was just entering college and I was on a four-wheeler with my little sister. She was driving and we were trying to keep up with the boys. They were going really fast and it was our first time on a four-wheeler. So we were having some fun <laughs> revving up that gas and we ended up hitting this little ledge and she was turning while we were in midair. Well, that clipped the front of the tire and we ended up rolling. And so next thing I know, she's in one direction. I'm clearing another direction and thank goodness we wore helmets. Um, but she was screaming at the top of her lungs and I'm over there feeling like I've got some issues going on with my spine. So I'm not moving. I'm staying stuck in there. And uh, eventually we kind of moved ourselves to, to get out because boys came back over and they were, you know, helping us out. So we got home and I'm like, I don't want to go to the hospital. Do you want to go to the hospital to get checked? And she's like, nah, let's just brush it off. Well, mom found out and she's immediately came over to my apartment and said, absolutely not. Get your butt to the hospital. So I go to the hospital and uh, come to find out I'm internally bleeding. I've got a sp a spleen that has been lacerated from the uh, handlebars of the uh, of the four wheeling accident. Now I wasn't externally bleeding, but it was um, it was enough of a, an abruption, a hit, or what have you, um, that created an internal laceration. So I ended up having to be on bed rest for a week straight. Couldn't even use the bathroom on my own. Couldn't even shower on my own. They wanted me completely horizontal. And um, the doctor said, I have to have her blood drawn every hour on the hour the entire week. So that's just what has to be. So that was when you're in the doctor's office, you kind of feel a little out of control, right? Like whatever they say, if you're bleeding internally, you feel a little helpless. So whatever they say, you're going to do. So next thing you know, every hour on the hour, I have a nurse coming in, poking me putting another stick in my arm to check my blood. Now, after the third day of every hour on the hour, 
and many nurses are starting to miss the vein. So I've had this entirely bruised, like blue arm. And I just had this massive anxiety. Every time that they were going to come back in the room, I would start to count down the seconds of when the next one was going to come in. And the anxiety that was building up and building up of thinking I'm going to get poked again with another needle. And it started to really, and I never even had sensitivity at all to needles or fear of them at all prior to this event. But it wasn't until this event that I got extremely anxious. And so that was my past event. Okay. So hopefully you came up with yours. We're going to go to step number two now. Step number two is how did your mind over-exaggerate the scenario? Okay. So for me in a, for my story, and I want you to write yours, but I'll share mine, is my over-exaggeration, well, one is I'm internally bleeding, and then also they poked me in the arm. So I was just thinking I was massively losing blood on a very quick level. I had no, you can't visually see internal bleeding. So my mind went to another level of fear. And I felt completely out of control, like no control at all when I'm in the helplessness or, um, you know, priority of whatever they say must go. And so the anxiety that kept building up, um, I could feel my my blood pressure and um, the nervousness starting to kick in. So my over-exaggeration was basically, I'm going to die in this hospital. I, t- I don't know if I'm going to make it because in one way or shape or form, I'm going to basically internally bleed out. Okay. So then step number three is, did it come true? So that's what I want you to write down. Yes or no? Did your over-exaggeration come true? What did your mind do to take you to another scenario that you thought was going to happen? And then after that, I want you to ask, now what is your superpower? Now that that event has happened, will you ever let that happen again? So what's your superpower? So here was my superpower was I sat up when the next nurse came in and I said, I need to speak to the doctor. She said, no problem. The doctor came in and I said, three days, look at my arm. Can I refuse this? And he goes, well, yeah, I just had some new nurses that needed a practice, but yeah, we can definitely just put an IV in. Wow. So when I was just recently then, that was years and years ago. So just recently I needed to go get some blood work done and I started to have the same anxiety panic attack start to hit me because why? I went back to that event, back to that memory and back to that emotion that I was feeling previous. And so my fiance helped me and he said, what's your superpower now? Will you let that past event happen? And I stood up and I was like, absolutely not. I'm never going to let that happen again. And he goes, so what are your boundaries? And that's what I want you to write down. When you think about that last step number three, what's your superpower? Basically what that means or what are your boundaries now? So for me, my boundaries are when I walk in somewhere, you got one chance. So I want the best of the best, no greenies. You need to be an expert or advanced or have been doing this for a really long time in order for you to even come close with me for that needle. And you got one time. If it doesn't work that one time, sorry, I'm gone. So that is now when I, when I know that for myself, my anxiety goes away because my superpower exists. My boundaries are there. My safe place is there. So there are... Other steps with anxiety, this is just one called the anchor method. And on the other videos, I'll share with you the other ones. But what a great way to go back to our past, recognize step number two of how our mind takes us to another level. And remember, our thoughts are always influencing our emotions. And so that's what the whole point of this is, is to go into really bringing truth and what your boundaries and what your new superpower is in order for you to feel that sense of control again, so that calmness can then start to take over. 
I would love to hear your experience with this. So go ahead and comment down below. What was this like going for you? Share your story, share your three steps. I'd love to hear. Lots of love and I'll tell you more about the other anxiety ones on the next videos.